Okay, so uh, in your book, you make the distinction between gravitational water, available water, and unavailable water. Sound, sounds self-explanatory, but I never really thought of it this way. Gravitational water, uh, available water, and unavailable water. And, and also how these relate to field capacity and wilting point. This was a really good thing for me to realize. So can you explain these terms a little bit and what you know what they mean and how they're related? Yeah, yeah. And this this comes back to water sticking to the soil, and the thinner the film, the the tighter it's held. Uh, and I like to think of the soil not so much as a bunch of solids, as a bunch of holes. Bunch of holes. That things that happen happen in the hole, but there's all different sizes of holes. There's little holes, there's big holes. Um, so the big holes, they hold the water loosely. You know, there's there's some held along the edges, but uh, not held very tightly at all. The the fine pores that water's held very tightly. Uh, the gravitational force we're familiar with it. That's you know what keeps us stuck to the earth you know we, we can't some of us can't jump very high because of gravity uh, if you've got a large pore that water is held loosely enough that gravity the gravitational force dominates and it will drain downwards with gravity that's how we call it gravitational water it will it will drain freely um, and when it drains those pores will empty out and fill up with air right uh, Field capacity is when those large pores have finished emptying out, when, when gravity has finished doing its job. So those big pores have, have emptied out. There's still a lot of water in the soil, but it's in those finer pores. And it's, it's held just tightly enough that gravity can't drain it out of the soil. Force of the gravity is not as strong as the the attraction um, of the, the, the electronic sort of yes yeah 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 so if you think of if you if you have a sponge you know a sponge in the sink and you pick it up and it will drain out but when it finishes draining there's still a lot of water in it that's a really good analogy yes yeah yeah and so what drains out freely is gravitational water ah that's a great okay. analogy yeah if you squeeze that sponge you put extra force on it you can squeeze more water out, and that's equivalent to the available water in the soil. Ah, the squeezable. That's right. The squeezable water. Yeah, right, it's, right, right. it's held. It's held loosely enough that plant roots can can absorb it. Right. So the, the plant roots will will be actively, you know, pulling water out of the soil, and it's it's held easily enough that the plant roots can extract it. Uh, the same way you squeeze the sponge, you can get a lot of water out of it, but when you finish squeezing, the sponge is still wet. Yes. And you can't squeeze it anymore. You can't get any more water out of it, but it's still wet. Yeah. Uh, the same way in the soil, we have water that hel is held so tightly that the plant roots cannot extract it. I think that's a tough one for people to understand. So you, you've got soil, the roots are in the soil, and there's moist, there's water in the soil. Yeah. But the, the, the plant literally can't get that water out. That's the unavailable water? That's the unavailable water. Even though it's, it's there. It's, it's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, if you take a soil sample, uh, you know, that it, it looks dry. Uh, the plants are wilting. You know, and we, yeah, the term we use is permanent wilting point. So if you think about it, if it's, as the soil dries down, you'll have some plants, they'll wilt during the day and then they'll come back at night. Yes. Yeah, you know, there's more more evaporative demand during the day or more demand for transpiration during the day and the roots can't keep up, but then at night it cools oh. down, you know, and they can, you know, get a, just enough water from the soil to uh, to come back. And then eventually you get to the point where, mm, no, it just doesn't come back and that's the permanent wilting point. Oh, I see. So, so, and I, I just moved a bunch of plants. So I had that phenomenon going on where during the day they just go, oh, and they just die and sort of thing. They'd look dead. And then, you know, uh, in the morning when I go out and check the garden, the misty fog of uh, the marriage. Oh, it's, it's a miracle. They're alive. They come right back. <laughs> um, so it's, it's not that there wasn't enough 
water in the soil. It's just that that plant, especially since it disturbed the root system, yep. could not could not keep up with the transpiration of right. the foliage. I yes. see. Right. Yep. Right. Yep. But when that can't even happen at all, that's that's, that's that's the permanent wilting point. So that's that's when plants would die or go dormant. It depends on the species. They can't even a, come a back drought, at night. A, a drought a drought tolerant plant will go go dormant until there's more rain. Uh, it, an expensive transplant for or, you know something you buy at the nursery and spend sixty bucks on will just die. And and so, uh, you know, we talk about plant available water. It's that water between field capacity when it stops draining and the permanent wilting point. Right. So, yeah, I guess that, I mean, I think we're going to get on this a little bit, but that's why it's, it's so important to have a, a soil structure that enables a maximum field capacity. Like, yeah, you, know, yeah. To, you wouldn't want it to be soup, um, but uh, <laughs> you know, you want soil that can hang on to water and not have it just disappear. So that you get a certain amount of days between good rains that you know that there's enough water, there's enough available or available water for the plants. 